What's up guys, Jordan from Bennett's Customs. We are back on another episode, working on the Roadster again. As I've mentioned several times, I wanna get these pedals sorted out so I can start working on the body. So today is all about getting the clutch brake pedal kind of working and mounted. We're gonna to have to heat, manipulate, bend our pedals um, and get them into a good location. I'll probably make a, a real quick plywood floor just so I have my heels to rest on something in order to know exactly where I want those pedals to to, uh, to sit in there. I'll try and you know mount that spoon pedal um, as well, just to try and get everything kind of where I want it um, comfortably. As Ben can see down below, we have several different pedal assemblies and I have more as well that I can kind of dig through, but these ones were on the top of the box. I was lucky enough to get that bracket that I had mentioned and showed you guys. So this is a, you know, a homemade um, bracket pedal assembly for a right-hand drive 32K member. I can kind of use this as reference, might even be able to build something off of it, and then I might create something of my own that's very similar. I do have that 33, 34 pedal assembly. I got two pairs of those, later ones. Um, I think those ones are 40, maybe. Um, but I think what I'm gonna use is mainly these guys. What we're gonna try and do is get straight into this. Probably gonna scratch my head a ton with this and kind of look at some photos for reference. I think we have enough stuff here to be able to create something that's gonna work and be safe, you know, and uh, yeah, get this thing to stop. So let's get into it. Okay, so after multiple ideas and all sorts of stuff, I went through my whole pedal assemblies, all my miscellaneous ones, and uh, yeah, I've kind of decided that these 33, 34 ones are gonna be the ones I'm gonna use. Um, and I'm gonna just machine them out or get a machine, get some new bros bronze bushings for them. This is the, um, the bracket that came in and I've just kind of cleaned it up a little bit just in order to make it a little bit easier. And uh, this is our stock looking, uh, or say stock copied right hand drive pedal assembly mount. And uh, I'm gonna try and replicate something, may even use this and kind of cut it. And I don't know. We're gonna get a bit creative. Maybe I'll kind of put the two together or something like that. But first off, what I need to do is where these two bolts are right here, these are uh, riveted on the K-frame itself, right there, one, two. And on that side, they're not there because this was a left-hand drive frame. So I need to remove those two rivets in order to get that base to sit down flush. And then once flush, I can kind of start to measure up everything. So we're gonna get those done right now.
So we got our rivet gun with our nice little rivet remover. All right, so here's our kind of that homemade bracket that fits extremely well, which is really nice actually. Could like almost use it, it's just thin and there's lots of bits that are welded to it. I like the piece, I think it's neat that someone's created this and it's a great reference point and the holes line up really well, which is awesome. But I just think I'd like to create something just a little bit more stout so there's no flex at all in the pedals. So here's our 33 pedal assembly, kind of loosely mocked up. As you can see, this does fit relatively well for, you know, the different years. So you can see why this is obviously a common um, swap. If you can't find a set of 32 pedals, these seem to be kind of the, the desirable ones or 39 pedals. All right, I'm gonna try and keep this as simple as possible. I think I've looked at it too much. I'm trying to over engineer it and I'm just okay, not really coming up with much. So what I am gonna do is utilize this and this, I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna use this bit inside here and we are gonna kind of create two out of one. Okay, so we have the 34 piece mocked in and I'm just gonna tack this into place and then we're gonna cut this bit off where we're gonna install our other piece of the 34 and then we're just gonna kind of clean all this up, make sure it looks nice and clean, make sure everything's square and then have a, a, a sus and see whether or not I like it. It's probably it would have been easier making a whole new bracket and I'm gonna keep saying that but for now, I think uh, I think I'll just try this and see. So there you go. So we've cut that piece off. I've cut this apart and now I've welded on that nice bit so it's kind of looks, you know, as if it's supposed to be there, which is kind of what I'm trying to do. So that'll finish off. I'll weld that little corner. We can blend that. I'll weld this. We'll blend that all off. I'll weld the inside and then we'll kind of have a sus, but I mean, that looks great already. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. Now I need to cut this bit off. Um, and try and get rid of all that. And then what I will do is mount this guy directly on there, but that. So I'm gonna try and do that now. So 
Usually this happens to me all the time because I get right in the zone and then I forget that I'm recording. Um, battery definitely died. I was explaining a heap of stuff and then didn't even realize that there was no red light flashing. Uh, so what I had done, I'm just going to kind of explain it over top of the camera, show you. This is what I've done. It's been sandblasted. This is kind of the old and old put together. Now, it would be really nice to just fully refabricate one like I mentioned several times. You know, it's a little bit thin and uh, structurally it needs, a bit of, it needs a bit of work. But then I thought like, how cool is this that this was given to me as a gift? Um, you know, it came over from the States and it was designed and, and fabricated from an old hot rodder named Jack Slankard, who had passed away last year at 87. And uh, Mercury Chops, uh, a guy on Instagram, actually gave me this bracket and it was a gift um, from Jack to him. So he kind of passed it down. So it's, uh, it's a privilege to have this piece. But I just think it's kind of neat to like take a bit of what he's created I've kind of just, you know, done a few alterations to it uh, in order to make it, you know, slightly uh, work a little bit better. Um, and, and then, you know, like I kind of have his story as well as, um, you know, just kind of complimenting what he's done on there. Um, I think it's really special. Even like his welds in here, you know, he's, he's definitely used what looks to be a stick welder. And I can see still a bit of the slag on there. Like, so what I can do is on the bottom side, it's not welded quite a, like, you know, there's no weld here and here. Um, and what I want to do is just kind of clean it all up, uh, make sure it's safe um, and structural enough. Uh, I could put even like, you know, a couple little um, pieces in here if I wanted to, but honestly, like once it's all bolted in, it's, it's going to be nice and strong. I've tested it already. I've put the shaft in, it does work. Um, you know, it's, it's a great piece. This will, uh, eventually I'll need to replace this bushing. And what I will do is these have like a plastic lining in them right now. Um, I will press these out and have to get a new set made. You can see this one is like definitely way offset um, considering where it should be. So I will have to machine these, um, and put some new bronze bushings in there. Once those are in, everything will nice and work nice and fluidly. But for the meantime, they're tight and they can kind of get me in the right direction. So they will need a little bit of final tweaking once they're done, but for now it does work really well. So what I'm going to do is just kind of clean a little bit of this up, um, fill a few little bits and pieces, maybe do another pass over top um, and just making sure that it's nice and strong. Once that's done, then we can kind of put it together and we'll go and mount it in the car and then we can figure out exactly where the pedals are. I will stick the body back on once it's kind of fixed into place. Um, the body's right over there. Once that's on top, then we can, um, I had mentioned I will make a little plywood floor and I'm just gonna do a quick little easy one just so I know where my heels are gonna sit and then where my heels will sit then I can kind of gauge exactly where the pedals need to be in relation to the steering column. And I had mentioned like, I want to make sure, like I'm, I'm assuming a lot of you guys know when you wear work boots, they're obviously a lot clunkier and bigger than your, than your you know, um, regular shoes that you'd wear. So I kind of want to build this in relation to my work boots so that it's a lot more comfortable when I'm wearing my regular shoes. Um, and then, you know, I still have room for both because I'm going to be driving this to and from work all the time. So this will essentially be my daily driver. Let's shoot back over to here. We're going to get this thing set up and, uh, and welded into place. So we can kind of just run around and fill a few of the, few, fill of the gaps. I even use that part of the 30. Oh, that is comfortable. Look at that little piece of the, 33, 34 pedal assembly. It's actually extremely comfortable on the hand. Well, in my absence, I'll be surely missing you. I've been working every day, 
And I sure hope you love this too And if it gave you cause to doubt me Hope you always think about me And if you think I will find another It ain't true Keep the home fire burning while I'm gone I'll be back to fan the flame It won't be long Just a while and then I'm back where I belong Right, so you just saw, I just went around, welded up a couple bits. I did kind of just jump in here and, and uh, just put a bit more filler in there and go over and do a nice little hot pass um, just to kind of clean it up a little bit and just make sure it's nice and strong. Um, you know, we got a lot of material in here and then on the back side we can kind of smooth this out so it sits flush on the K-member. So I'm just going to um, dress everything now with the grinder and we'll just hit it with a sander and then uh, we are good to go. I'll hit it with some 60 first up just to knock the top of the weld off. Lord, I know I've done some evil in my time. That don't mean there ain't no goodness in this evil heart of mine. And it don't mean that I can't see the light. So while I'm out here fighting this good fight, just keep the all fire burning while I'm gone. I'll be back to fan the flame, it won't be long. I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to. Then I'm home Keep the home fire burning while I'm gone Keep the home fire burning After a little bit of sanding and prepping, this thing looks awesome. It's exactly what we were after. You know, inside might not look nice. It doesn't have the nice perfect welds, but that's all right. I know it's, um, yeah, for what it is, I'm, uh, I'm totally happy with it. So I think what we can do now is uh, fit that pin. We'll go and install this and see what it looks like. We can take our um, levers and this still needs to be slightly played with, but at least for now, I can kind of get a rough idea of where it's all gonna go. We get this guy. And I'll just give it a light tap. When I meant light, I meant hit it. There we go. So now we have these set up, ready to go. So this is going to work. We got the arm on the bottom. This will travel across here, master cylinder will sit here. That'll actuate as done like this. It will need a little bit of modifying. I will cut, clean up that as well. Solid. Oh, I'm just trying to get any flex out of it just to see, but <clears throat> she's, she's definitely in there. So there you have it. Pedals are in, they're operating, they're hitting everything, which is okay, because they need to be trimmed and bent and manipulated. But we have a set of pedals working. So now what we need to do is actually get the body back on and then we can kind of see what we need to, uh, to adjust. All right, body is back on. So now what we need to do is, we need to make a little plywood floor. That's gonna help me with um, where my feet are gonna go. Hindsight, that F100 cross member that's up there on the very top right there, that would have been really cool to put in here. 
so that none of this was here on the other side. And I could have had a little pocket where I could have dropped my feet down into, like a little pocket in the floor that I've seen guys do. But I think I should be able to still do that. Maybe, maybe it'll start here and kind of work like that so my heels can sit down in here. But we'll, um, we'll have a sass. Anyways, let's uh, measure this up. Then we will cut out a little ply floor or I could use basically anything. Um, but I wanna do this because I wanna know exactly where my heels are gonna be on and then I know exactly where these need to go. All right, <clears throat> so there's our piece. Fingers crossed that by my measurements, it fits. I could just clamp it into place because I'm gonna have to move it several times, but at least this is now giving me a gauge of where the floor is gonna be, to where my feet are gonna be, to where those are gonna go. So it's tricky. You really wanna make sure you're kind of thinking ahead. So I need to make sure that I'm kind of doing all this in preparation. So I might even go cut a piece of that form ply to sit right here and another piece to sit and come up here. So I kind of roughly know where I'm sitting in order to have the, a comfortable state of where my feet are gonna be. Okay, so I'm just playing around with some ideas here. So if my masks were correct, this is kind of what I'm thinking. That is the top of the padding where my back would hopefully sink in slightly. This is back to the factory position, kind of where it's gonna sit. Here's, here's my butt, my butt's gonna sit in that corner. And then we're gonna have that floor up there. Wheels on, I'm just gonna pull this off so I can get in, because it's so friggin' small in here. Oh, it's actually quite comfortable. We're on, we're jammed, work boots driving this. Remember that whole thing I explained about building it for work boots? Might be having a pair of slippers in here or just driving it bare feet and then having to put my boots on because holy moly. Maybe it's just this wheel. Maybe I should have come higher up. Maybe I should have had it like, nah, can't do that. I mean, it feels comfy, kind of where I'm sitting. I'm a, I wish I was a bit lower. If I was lower, I would drop down more, which would essentially give me more bend in my knee. So I'm better to be higher in the back. So there's less bend. That's like, not that bad though. <laughs> but, shut the door. That's how I was sitting in my old green roadster. I'd just, I'd get in, my back would be there. But then when I was driving, I'd always kind of scooch in where we put these bad sallies. And do I run those orange little balls? Are they too big? They're probably too big, or not orange balls. Can drive with my knees though, that's cool. <coughs> All right, not fussing about. Basically, in a nutshell, it's not gonna be comfortable. Cat, gotta think about this. Okay, so the pedals are down, they're in, and from jumping in and kind of measuring with my feet and that, I need to shorten them by like 25 mil. So what I'm gonna do is just pull them out. We're gonna take a little bit out of each one, shorten them down 25 mil, re-weld them up, stick them back in, then we'll get the torch over here and we can kind of manipulate them where we want in order to clear everything, have them nice and symmetrical on either side of the steering column, and then we can uh, decide what we're gonna do with the feet and if we can even run those old rubber pads or we might have to run something um, a lot smaller which I kind of have a feeling is what we're gonna have to do. So we're gonna get these pulled out now and then we'll um, get them back over to the table. Okay, so got them back on the table. I'm gonna punch this back out. Once this is out, then we need to um, shorten these about 25 mil, maybe 30. All right, so I'm gonna try and take it out of here and then I'll try and blend the back side. So I'll keep the front face looking the same. Same with this one, I'll just take it. This one doesn't have as much taper on it so it should be a little bit easier. And then once these are done, we will um, get these put back in and then we can kind of heat and manipulate them where we need to. All right, time has come. 
We must cut. I'm scared, I'm nervous, but here goes nothing. All right, now that that's cut, I need to exactly take 30 mil from this. So I'm just gonna kind of clean this edge up and then I'm gonna use a scribe, run all the way around 30 mil, try and cut on that line so that this kind of sits where it would be or have been. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna set this to, I'm gonna do 25 mil, not 30. Pile of, pile of arms. So, skinny, skinny with, skinny with skinny, fat with fat. Tack those together, put these ones together, bang, bang. And once these are welded, we can um, fit them back into the K frame. Right, so. I welded them together. GoPro died again, uh, mid welding, but pretty self-explanatory. All I had done was take that, that 25 mil out and then I brought them back down together and just did a nice pass all the way around. So you can see where I had done it and I will dress and clean these up afterwards, but we just wanted to put them in and just make sure that they fit kind of in the right spot. So what I'd like to try and do is, I'd actually like to run these. I think they're really neat. Um, but having said that, they're probably a bit big for how much room I have in here. But let's just try. This one looks like a new old stock one. This one's a little bit worn out, but that's all right. Okay, so there's our pedals. That's kind of where Roughly they're gonna have to sit because we'll have that board that'll kind of come over here. Um, that one clears the steering column nicely. This one doesn't. Kind of hits it by heat. If I were to take that bend out and straighten it, it would bring it right over and actually clear. But here's the big but. I don't want to, the thing is, is when I'm using my boot and pedal assembly. So I have several of these spoon type pedals that I could run. Um, and it's just a matter of how and, and where I run them. So if I had it kind of down here, I could probably get away with that or even there. But what I wanted was kind of up comfortably where I could just be on my heel and pivot from from here to here. So what I can, yeah, I don't know. My boot hits the steering column when it's on the wood. So I'm gonna have to play around with this a bit too, whether or not I bring this out more like that. And then you go from the accelerator to the brake that way, which would work. Um, but I'll just explain to you, I'll just show you. What I'll do is I'll stick this piece of ply back in. That's gonna be the base of the floor. If I jump in there, and you can kind of see there's my feet. So you can see that there's not a lot of room between the side of the cowl and our pedal. And this is kind of, you know, like we're on, we're on the floor. It's a dark, dark floor, but you get the idea. Like that's, that's basically it. So for the clutch, clutch is great. Like I can be driving 
shifting gears, no problem here. That's, that's good. It's actually quite comfortable. If anything, I could maybe heat and just turn these up slightly so they're not facing so vertical. Um, and I could kind of turn them up and it might just be a little bit more comfortable on my foot. And then when I'm applying the clutch, you know, then it's probably comfortable. So, and they don't necessarily need to sit all the way up here. I could have them down like that even, like that's even way better. And then what I need to do is try and have like that spoon pedal over in the corner here. And then kind of from there, reach for the brake kind of thing like that. So. I think what has to happen is that this pedal assembly, something like this has to, has to be kind of over here in order to allow me to be on and off both pedals safely and have enough room. So, you know, this is obviously worst case scenario when I'm wearing my boots, but if I'm running at bare feet, which I used to drive my roadster barefoot all the time or in shoes, like regular shoes, not boots, then it's gonna be fine. So yeah, these are just kind of all the things you wanna take into consideration. Imagine just building this car slightly bigger. That'd be great too. But yeah, you get the idea. I will try and make the, the, the stroke of that as short as I can. Whatever, regardless of what we're gonna do, I need to kind of get this one over more in order to clear this. So I want it to be just like this where maybe it's even just almost touching. Um, just so they're both symmetrical and then we can kind of work out how everything else is going to play into effect And then I'm not going to do anything until I machine the bushings um, For where they pivot off the box down here Because where they are mounted There's a little bit of play in this one It's kind of like tweaked a little bit the way that the piece is going through so I need to bring that in and what, what's that essentially gonna do is this whole one's gonna come over a fair bit and then they're gonna need tweaking again. So I think like for the meantime, I could probably just leave them the way they are um, until we have this assembled properly, bolted in, and then we can kind of play around with them before we go and paint these. So now we can kind of like pull this body off and start to do a bit of work on the frame itself. We still need to address this area right there. Um, and then, yeah, kind of working out what to do with a seat. I was just actually explaining it to one of the boys. I'll kind of explain to you what I'm coming up with. Let's just put this guy back in here. So there's our floor. This is our stock Model A seat base. This is the back. And what you see, the form ply here, I want this to be the highest point of, of the the, the, so this is the actual finish outside of the leather is right here, which means if I were to like lean against this, then my back would essentially kind of sink in a little bit. So, you know, realistically, it'll actually sit back here and say there's probably three or four inches of like padding and, and foam and stuff like that. I'll probably do it out of ply. So I'm probably not gonna have the fancy seats that everyone has with springs in them because I can't, can't afford them and I don't really want to use a van seat because I don't really like the way they sit. I kind of want to just create something like I did with the Roadster. The Roadster one turned out really, really nice. That was out of ply um, and had it upholstered, had the webbing in there and it was super comfortable. I want to make this one like sort of firm in the back but nice and cushy in the butt. So again with the butt, this would be the top. So that would be top of the padding right there. And then when you sit in this, you'd actually, essentially, you'd sink into here. So whether or not we build off the base here, or if we actually build a little, you know, that's what I was thinking. So I might try and remove this or shorten it so that you don't feel this. Like we'll have just a, a nice kind of tight area along here. So I'm gonna kind of manipulate this slightly. And then what it'll do is we'll have the foam and then right here I'll have a little kick up and then it'll come down and we may even just wrap it right around this edge or wrap it around whatever we have that will kind of sit into here and this will be our edge which could look really nice too so I still want to use this because it's just kind of gives you a nice profile um, but I just really want to make sure we get that back laid out and then that way I can fit relatively nice all right so as you can see we just took the body off 
Um, there was just a few measurements I wanted to do on that. We just rolled it outside to kind of get an idea of, uh, of how they look with the steering column and everything. Really want to make sure that we have lots of clearance between the pedal, the pads themselves, the steering column. So once the body's kind of fixed in place um, and we know exactly where the column's gonna go angle-wise, then I'll play around with these once we get the floor and stuff in. So it'll kind of do the job. I've made a little kind of ghetto seat. So you, you know, it's essentially this is kind of where I'm gonna be sitting, a little bit higher obviously, and we'll have a little bit of a floor on there, but that's gonna be super comfortable to kind of, you know, be able to pivot off the heel on both and uh, we'll make sure everything works. So I did get the master cylinder, it just arrived. So I'm gonna make the bracket for that in our next video with our linkage. And uh, I will probably put the shaft through the transmission as well so we can get the clutch linkage and everything hooked up. Once that's done, uh, realistically, all the frame stuff on this is kind of near on complete. So we're almost at the point when I can, I can essentially start blowing this apart and uh and get some of it cleaned up and into the into the booth and painted rear end still needs to be disassembled and just gone through making sure everything's all right in there i did notice one of the keyways on the um on the tapered shaft is a little bit worn out so we'll go through that but yeah definitely pretty happy with you know how it's coming out um, i feel like i overlooked that too much just going through all the pedals and stuff and that those 33 34 pedals um you know really kind of made easy work of it. So I still will machine those out. I'll kind of explain how I'm going to do that and add those bronze bushings in to make sure everything's tight on that shaft. Little teaser too. You can see the Roadster's got no doors on it. Well, it's, it always kind of had one missing when Carl was working, but little sneak peek. <clears throat> doors. That is next week episode. Getting those all um, cleaned up, rust repair finished and we'll uh, get those all together. I just got all the door hardware. I have some old latches that I'm gonna rebuild, some old door handles that are kind of some nice old chrome. So we're gonna get everything working so that those things will shut nicely. Also, for our members, we do have, oh, this is Larry's. This is just kind of an example of our keychains. So you got your Bennett's logo on the front, on the back side, we've hand punched them. There's a little bit of character to them as well. They're not all perfect, which I kind of like, but that's, uh, that's Larry's. He was our fourth member to kind of ever jump aboard. So Larry, you're number 004, which is pretty cool. So um, yeah, we'll be getting these things all finished off uh, within the next couple of days and um, sent out to all of our members. If you guys are one of our members, can you guys just drop us an email as well with your addresses so that we know where to ship these out to? For those who are a little bit more interested in the membership, um, we have the link in the description. So just click on that and uh, have a little read through and see if it's something you guys are into. Otherwise, enjoy the channel. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, we got lots coming up um, throughout the next month with um, quite a few things on the Roadster uh, with our little airplane motor that we've kind of briefly spoke about and uh, a couple other really cool things, so stay tuned. Now, but I won't be long.